As a trainer, a person's posture can give me a lot of information in terms of their function. So with exercise, it's all about stimulus and response, right? We try to stimulate the, the body enough to elicit this response, okay? So the reason why our legs aren't this big full of muscle from just walking around because walking around isn't enough stimulus. But if I asked you to do walking lunges, now that would take the stimulus up and you would start to see a change. That would be the response. It is the same way in the workspace. If you are a surgeon and you are bending over someone's body and you're doing that for extended periods of time, that's the stimulus. And typically what we find is a person's body will respond to said stimulus, trying to get as comfortable as they can in that position. To the point where when they come out of that position, the body is somewhat fighting against itself. And so when I first met Julie, that was one of the things that I noticed right away during the assessment. The good thing is that you can reverse that. Again, if I can stimulate her body in the opposite direction, then we started to see some success in terms of discomfort in her shoulders and neck. Um, what we're gonna do today is kind of give you a, 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 a look behind the veil of what some of those exercises are. And if you do these exercises daily, you will start to see uh, a change in your comfort level at work. So the method that I like to use here at the Sustainable Surgeon Project is to, when a person is stuck in this forward shoulder position due to their occupation, it's because you have certain muscles that are overactive and certain muscles that are underactive. So in this case, it would be the muscles of your chest and shoulders. Now those muscles are pulling you forward, so those would be the overactive muscles. The ones in the back that are supposed to be responsible for pulling your shoulders back are operating at a longer length, right? So the way or the method that we use here is we want to get the muscles that are overactive to relax. So the pass-throughs, as I will show you shortly, will help get these muscles to sort of relax. Now, if all we do is relax those muscles, the body will return to where it started. So the other or the next step would be to take these muscles back here that are holding on for dear life and actually get them to activate. So once we relax your chest muscles, then we want to do some movements to get those posterior muscles of the back, upper back, to work. And later we'll be demonstrating those exercises as well. Now once we get the, the, the agonist to relax and the antagonist to strengthen, then we will do a couple of movements to integrate the movement so that it sticks. The pass-through. You just need a PVC pipe. You're going to grab that PVC pipe. You're going to get your feet just outside of shoulder width apart. You want to engage your glutes. Draw your belly button in towards the spine. Now, you're going to maintain that feeling in your core. You're going to try to keep your arms straight as you raise this bar above your head and behind your back. Squeezing your glutes, maintaining a tight core. And it's a good idea to try to do 10 to 15 of these. Now if that is easy, you want to choke up or get your fist closer, keep the arms straight, come back. You're trying to get all of the mobility from your shoulders and not your, your core, right? We're trying to just move the shoulders. And I'll do like maybe 10 of these in this direction, just forwards and back. Right? And then I would just go do three to each side. So I'd go above the head, still maintaining arms straight at the elbows, all the way down in the back. And you come all the way around. That would be one. That would be two. And three, and then we would just reverse it.
and that's the pass-through. Now the reason for the pass-through is again, if I'm a surgeon and I am bent over, shoulders are forward. My body, when I stand up, I'm done doing surgery, shoulders are still forward. What the pass-through helps you do is it helps you take those shoulders and open them up. It's the opposite. Now, if you've been performing surgery for an extended number of years like Dr. Chavez had been doing, then when you first start, you're probably going to have your arms way out here. And it's going to be very difficult for you because your body has already started to form into that shoulder forward, elbow up position. So this is going to be difficult, but it will improve. The passer. So the first thing we're going to do is going to grab a set of three pound weights, right? You don't want to go too heavy with this because um, typically we're stronger in the front of our body than we are in our upper back. And we want to make sure that we get the mechanics of the movement. The mechanics of the movement is going to be the priority. So let's just use a lighter weight. So Julie's got two three pound weights here and we're going to start with the Y's, right? And the reason why we call this exercise a Y is because you actually make a Y with your body, right? Except you're going to do that Y while you're folded in half. So what I'm going to have Julie do is get her, get her feet about, uh, let's go maybe two inches apart. So go ahead and move them in closer together, right? She's going to stand up nice and tall. She's going to draw her belly button into her spine and then she's going to squeeze her glutes. Now, Julie's gonna go ahead and fold herself in half at the hips, and the way she's gonna do that is she's gonna pull her hips back, all right? There's gonna be a slight bend in her knees. She's gonna make a V with the weights down here. Now, with keeping her spine in line and the weight on the heels, she's just gonna raise those weights up and make her V. Nice, and then back down, all right? And raise again, breathing out, and then she's gonna breathe in on the way down. And raise again, nice. And what you really want to focus on in this move is just to make sure that the only thing is moving is her arms. She's trying to lock everything in place. She's going to do about three more of these. Nice. You want to hold it at the top just for a second to make sure that you own the movement. Good job, Julie. How'd that feel? Good. So. All right. So. Yep, shoot those hips back. Now you're gonna do a slight bend in the knees, right? All the weight is on the heels. You're making your V and you're just gonna extend up. Nice, good job. Now don't go too wide on your V or your Y. There you go, good job. One more. And you just hold it up there for a second and own the movement. All right, that's good. Okay, so now we're gonna do some T's. And in terms of your body, the setup's the same. The difference is instead of making a Y with your body, you're actually going to make a T, but you're still going to be folded in half. So you remember how we do these? So same foot position, mm -hmm. right? You're going to send those hips back as you fold yourself in half. And then the most important piece of this is making sure that she comes straight out to the side. So Julie, you're just going to raise out to the side and you're going to hold it for half a second to own the movement and then come back down. Nice. Good job. Just keep going with that. We got about four more of these. Now the tendency is for people to raise to the back because we're kind of stronger, lower in the back when you're extending the arms off to the side. But Julie's been doing this for a while, so she's being very careful to just raise the arms out to the side. And that is perfect. You got one more, one more. Hold it up there. Bam. Good job. All right. How's that? Good. Good? Yeah. All right. Good. Side view. So. Squeeze the butt, draw the belly button in as tight as you can. Now remember, when you go back, when you go down, you're gonna shoot those hips back to where all the weight is in your heels. You're trying to create a straight line from your head to your hips, and then you're just gonna go straight out to the side. Perfect. Three, two, making sure that you're going straight out to the side. One and done. Good job. All right. Those are the T's. Okay. Good. T. T. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to oh, roll into the W's. Julie's 
favorite movement, right? <laughs> but this is where you're going to get the most benefit in terms of stimulus and response like I spoke of earlier. Now, this is called a W because she's going to make her body a W but she's gonna fold herself in half and then we're going to extend the arms over the head. So you remember these, right, Julie? Yep. So the foot placement's the same. We're always gonna draw the belly button in and squeeze the butt because it's easier to organize your spine from a standing position than it is a bent over position. And then Julie's just gonna fold herself in half by shooting her hips way back. There we go. And then she's gonna bring up the elbows and the arms and try to keep these at the same height as she extends above her head and tries to make them touch. Boom, and then back. Dropping the elbows and go. Good job. Again, focusing on making sure nothing's moving except her arms. We'll go three more on these. Good job. Keep the fist up. The fists are gonna to wanna to drop. Good job, one more. And good job, nice, Julie. Look at that, standing up straighter <laughs> already. <laughs> W's, so you know, squeeze your glutes together, right? Draw the belly button in, organize that spine, and then from your head to your hips, you're gonna try to keep in a straight line as you shoot those hips back, right? Elbows up as high as you can get them, fist up as high as you can get them, and then you're gonna extend out above your head and make the weights touch. Boom, there you go, good job. Keeping those shoulder blades nice and pinched, coming way down with the elbows, focusing on moving nothing but her arms. It's gonna integrate the movement. Good job, Julie, we'll go one more for the money. And rest it. Good job, all right, those are the W's.